So does TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube have you feeling like you possibly have ADHD? Do your friends joke about the fact that you must have it? Have you wondered all your life why you're so forgetful? Have a difficult time staying focused or organizing things? Or perhaps the more you learn about ADHD, you are beginning to believe you possibly have it. So these holes, it means significantly lower blood swab. So if you don't get your brain to the nutrients, needs, it starts to die. Hey, my name is Shaleen Johnson. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I want to mention that I'm not a doctor. I just play one here on the podcast. <laughs> just joking. How about this? There's been a 165% increase in the number of adults who've been diagnosed with ADHD. Despite that huge increase, it's just 4.4% of the population that's actually been diagnosed with ADHD. It's believed, however, that the number is probably much higher because so many people are walking around undiagnosed. People possibly like you. By the way, I was one of those people. I did not get my own diagnosis until I was 45 years old. And it wasn't a surprise to me, but it was life-changing. And in this video, this episode of The Shaleen Show, I'm going to share with you what ADHD is, why I believe that there are many different types of ADHD, why perhaps you were never diagnosed, especially if you are a woman or of a certain age. I'm going to go over some simple questions that may help you to identify if in fact you should go get a proper diagnosis from a qualified medical professional. I'm also going to address the question you might have, which is like, why would I even bother going to get a diagnosis? I'm pretty sure I have it and it's not curable. So like, what's the point? I have a very strong opinion on that. Okay. So let's start off with the basics. What is ADHD? And I feel like we used to call it ADD and there is really a difference between ADD and ADHD. Generally speaking, most people now refer to it as ADHD, which stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. And just about anyone who has ADHD kind of hates hearing that full description because most of us have like supernatural abilities to focus. We don't have a deficit of focus. We have a, well, you know who says it best? Dr. Barkley. It is phrased as a form of laziness. This layabout, ne'er-do-well, carefree, careless attitude that you could change if you wanted to, right? But we know it as the executive failure. It really is. This disorder precludes you from organizing across time. So you live in the moment. And you cannot organize very large, hierarchically sequenced behavior across time. It means that future-directed behavior is intentional behavior, which means ADD is actually IDD intention deficit disorder. I don't seem to be able to accomplish most of the things I intended to do. You can call that a short attention span, but I think intention deficit disorder captures it much better. Now, the frontal lobes, the executive system is where you take what you know and you apply it in your daily life. It is not where you know something. It is where you use what you know. The back part of the brain acquires knowledge. The front part of the brain puts it in play. ADHD has separated these two like a meat cleaver. So it really doesn't matter what you know. You can't use it as effectively as other people can. ADHD is a performance disorder. You can't perform the things you know how to do. It is not a knowledge disorder. By the way, he's like one of my favorite experts to follow when it comes to ADHD. He does a ton of YouTube videos on it. So I'm going to link to him below this episode. And if you are someone who has ADHD or you have a child who has ADHD, I think you're going to learn so much from his content. ADHD is considered a neurodevelopmental disorder. Um, it is recognized by the DSM-5, which means you do need a proper diagnosis for it. It's not make believe. That is my pet peeve. When I hear someone who doesn't struggle with this, suggest that it's just a matter of having better habits, getting more organized, not being so lazy. I want to pinch their heads off. If that's you, you better run. Literally, it drives me crazy. People with ADHD have a persistent pattern of struggling to focus, persistent patterns of being inattentive to certain details, certain topics 
in certain situations. You'll often hear hyperactivity, but I also want to mention that hyperactivity sometimes is hyperactivity in the brain, especially for women, especially for young girls. I know as a young girl, I was not physically hyperactive, but my brain was. And even today, I think people would consider me someone who's relatively calm if you're like to spend time with me. I'm not like super physically hyper, but my brain is. If I'm sitting in a chair, my brain is going so fast, I don't even know how to stop it if I'm not managing it. And we're going to talk about how you can manage it. People with ADHD often also have an impulsivity. Now, again, when you hear impulsivity, that makes it sound like this is this person who, who's you know impulsively doing drugs or gambling or spending. But sometimes the impulsivity is just an impulse or a lack of impulse control to decide what it is you should be doing. For ex- with, with myself personally, I struggle with that when I, I know I need to be, let's say, recording an episode of the Shaleen show, or I need to be doing research for it. But like, I feel so freaking compelled to organize my sock drawer. Like I, I, I feel like I don't have a choice. It's that much of an impulse control. And I've felt that way all my life from the time I was very young. Typically adults who have ADHD had these symptoms as a kid, even if you weren't diagnosed with it. So if you're someone who's like, yeah, I've always kind of wondered, but I got good grades. Like there's all these myths around what someone with ADHD is like. Like you, you probably have heard like, oh, they're, they're super disorganized. They, they get poor grades. They didn't do well in school. That's not always true. There are so many different ways that many of us learn to mask these things. I, naturally I am very disorganized. Naturally it is hard for my brain to figure out like what to do first. But because of that, I learned so many coping skills that even though it doesn't come natural to me, I've forced myself through habits and behavioral modifications to be like one of the most organized people I know. But my brain naturally doesn't know how to put things in order. That's why I don't know where my push journal is. It's usually right here by me. I guess I lost it, which is another sign of someone who has ADHD. We're constantly misplacing things. So if you suspect that you have ADHD, and we're going to get to some questions that I think are going to help you to decide if, in fact, it's something that you should look into further, you might be wondering, what is the point of getting a diagnosis? Well, I think it's really important. First of all, if you you have a kid who you think has ADHD, please, I beg of you. Like it, you, have a, you have a moral, a parental responsibility to get them a proper diagnosis and not just for ADHD, just like for, for about anything, right? Because when we have any type of mental health issue or neurodivergence that goes undiagnosed, we are at, they are at, you may be at a higher risk of depression, doing poorly in school, substance abuse, injury, incarceration, traffic accidents, job failure, unemployment, divorce, obesity, financial problems, and lastly, suicide. According to the DSM-5, the DSM-5, which is what most therapists and medical professionals use to offer a diagnosis, they recognize three different types of ADHD. However, I'm going to tell you that one of the most renowned experts in ADHD, who is Dr. Daniel Amen, believes that there are seven different types. In fact, I think when you hear about these three different types, you're going to think to yourself, there's got to be more than three. Okay, so the three that are recognized by the DSM-5 at the moment are predominantly inattentive. This is someone who has difficulty maintaining attention on certain things, certain topics if they're not interested in it. Difficulty organizing thoughts, patterns, tasks. Difficulty following through and they struggle to pay attention and listen if it's something that they find boring. The second type is hyperactive impulsive. This is typically an adult who has exceptional focus, but they're very hyperactive and very impulsive. And the third type that's recognized is a combination of those two. Now, I don't know about you, uh, but if you know someone who has ADHD, I bet they have a bunch of other symptoms or maybe even some characteristics that don't fit into one of those three, which is really two uh, different forms of ADHD. So let's talk a little bit about my own personal story, if I can. As a podcaster, I started podcasting, I think in like 2012, maybe. And in one of my episodes, I had Dr. Daniel Amen on the show. We talked about attention deficit disorder in children. After we finished recording, he said to me very bluntly, I think you should come in and have your brain scanned. And I said, really? 
oh, okay. I've always joked about the fact that I thought I had ADHD, but I, I believed probably as some of you have thought that it was just something that like, if you weren't diagnosed with a kid, you didn't have it as an adult. It's something that people grew out of. But after he asked me quite a few questions, I realized, gosh, yeah, I answered in a way that made him believe there's a very high likelihood that I did have ADHD. And I want to share some of those questions with you now. So imagine that you're answering these questions with either never, sometimes, rarely, or often. How often do you have difficulty sustaining your focus, keeping your attention on one thing? How often are you easily distracted by external stimuli, like something in your environment or some kind of unrelated thought? How often do you avoid, dislike, or are you reluctant to engage in tasks that require you to focus or require sustained mental effort? Do you have trouble listening to someone even when they're speaking directly to you if your mind is somewhere else? Do you have difficulty organizing activities, knowing what things need to be done first, or how to organize your time, time management? You're often falling behind in deadlines, have a difficult time showing up to places on time. How often do you fail to give close attention to details, or do you find yourself making careless mistakes? How often do you forget to do something that you do all the time, such as missing an appointment, closing a drawer, paying a bill, remembering where you put your phone, How often do you lose, misplace, or damage things? How often do you have trouble following through on multi-step instructions? Or do you find yourself losing focus and getting sidetracked? How often do you struggle waiting for your turn to speak or waiting in line or waiting in traffic? How often do you feel like you are driven by a motor, that you're uncomfortable sitting still, meditating, or focusing for long periods of time in situations like restaurants or meetings? How often do you find that you want to blurt out the answer or interrupt someone because you're afraid you're going to forget the answer or because it's difficult to wait for your turn in a conversation? How often do you feel restless, like you want to get out and do something? How often do you fidget with your hands, your feet, or squirm in your seat? How often do you find yourself talking excessively? Yeah, that one feels like a personal attack. How often do you interrupt or intrude on others, such as butting into their conversations or taking over what others are doing? Well, if you answered sometimes or often, it's probably pretty likely that you may have ADHD. Now, that doesn't mean you have a diagnosis. What it might mean is you should seek a professional diagnosis. And I can't tell you how valuable it was for me to go and have my brain scanned. So one of the reasons why, and I'm just going to you know, be straightforward about this, there's a lot of controversy around Dr. Amen, and I don't know why, because no one has scanned more brains and treated more people with ADHD than this man. Now let's talk about this for a second. Most medical professionals are simply going to ask you a series of questions, take a medical history, maybe do a psychological profile, but they're not going to look at your brain. And we know that ADHD is in the brain, but they're going to ask you a series of these questions. They're going to ask you these diagnostical and and may, may have you take a test. And then they're going to decide if in fact you have ADHD. At With Dr. Amen, he does that too. But in addition to that, he's one of the pioneers of actually looking at the brain using something known as a brain spect or brain imaging. And for the life of me, I cannot figure out how anyone would have a problem with a doctor who's like, yeah, I'm going to do what everyone else is doing and I'm actually going to look at the organ. Kind of seems like common sense, right? Dr. Amen and many others believe that there's a nuanced understanding of ADHD. And oftentimes these very limited tests don't give us the information we need to identify the very nuanced differences in the way ADHD presents itself. Dr. Amen believes that there are seven different types of ADHD, including classic, inattentive, overfocused, temporal lobe, limbic ADHD, ring of fire, and anxious ADHD. My diagnosis at age 45 was remarkable. And I might also note that it's never too late to get a diagnosis. My dad, I think he was 72 years old when he got his diagnosis of ADHD. And for me, it was like, no wonder. Like I always felt like we had very similar brains and which was a good thing, right? So I I never felt like there was anything wrong with me when I was at home. I felt like there was something wrong with me when I was in school, when I was at work, all the things that I struggled with. 
And despite that, many of those coping mechanisms are why I believe I'm successful today. But I think it would have made a really big difference had I known much earlier that's what was going on in my brain. Because while my home life helped me to be very confident and, you know, like it was normal. It was normal to constantly change subjects. It was normal to never finish a project. It was normal to show up late to freaking everything. I thought that was all normal, but that doesn't fly in the real world. And so when I was in the real world, when I was in school, when I got my first job, like I, I just couldn't understand why I couldn't do the things other people could do. I thought there must be something wrong with my brain genetically. And it's not there's something wrong with my brain. It's different. And I see details other people don't. I can focus. I just have to be really interested in it. And I've learned because of my diagnosis how to make behavioral modifications, how to not be able to concentrate because my dog is like hacking up a lung in the background. What's wrong, monkey? She left. It seems like a good time to tell you guys about Patreon. If you enjoy uh, like the personal side of this stuff and you want a little bit know a little bit more about like my personal life and my husband and like, I don't know, some things that we just don't talk about on the regular show, I'd love to invite you to become a member of our Patreon. It's a private, uh, very exclusive uh, podcast, I guess you could say. Yeah. And right now you can join Patreon for free and try it for seven days. So check it out. I'll put a link below this episode. Um, my recommendation would, to you would be to join the highest level because hello, it's free. Duh. Like, I'm like, why do people join? Why would they join like the lowest tier? No, it's freaking free right now. So at least try out the highest, highest tier. And then if you like it, you could always drop down to the lower tier. It's like only five bucks. So I mean, check it out. Anyways, the diagnostic process at the Amen Clinic, and I'm not trying to tell you to go there. Like I want you to go, where, and we're going to talk about like where you can actually go to get a diagnosis. But I, ju I just wish everyone had access to this. And I don't think it's covered by insurance. Maybe it is. I shouldn't speak out of turn. But I just thought it was like the coolest, most thorough experience I could have ever possibly imagined. So they um, put a dye in your arm and they have you go through a series of experiments, basically. <laughs> I'm probably slaughtering the way this is should be described, but like, hello, it's me. Okay, so the first day I had to sit at a computer and oh, and P.S. When I went in to have my brain scanned, I was like, oh, this is gonna be good. Like, I know I'm a genius. I had these like visions of like people would be, coming like doctors would be like come in here we've got ourselves a genius look at this like i really was like they're just gonna see this brain like lit up and they're gonna they're gonna say we're seeing colors on your scan we've never seen but there's glitter in this brain what is going whatever it you are a specimen i was so excited like, i can't wait for them to check out my brain right so i sit down the first day they put the dye in my arm and i have to take you have to take this like really boring test on a computer I fell asleep and then I woke up and I was like how do I cheat oh my god oh my god because they've said like you know you can't stop the test like just take the test it's time and I'm like oh my god how do I cheat like I need to tell them like I, do I unplug the computer I literally was like trying to cheat because I was so embarrassed I'm like I can't eat not only can I not pay attention to finish this test I friggin fell asleep it put my brain to sleep crazy yes yeah, so I was like okay this isn't this isn't going well and then I came back the next day. So you really had to focus, right? And then you do this full psychological evaluation and all these tests with uh, the doctor that was assigned to me and you know this psychological evaluation, if you will. And then the next day I came back and they had me huh, huh, do the scariest thing I've ever done in my whole life. And that was sit in a room with no phone, no magazines, nothing to look at just a dim light. I think it was even a rocking chair. And they're like, just sit there for 30 minutes. Okay. Oh, and by the way, after they did each one of these things, then they would put you in the spectrogram or whatever that machine is called. And they scan your brain because they want to see like what, what, what was your brain doing when it had to focus? Okay. Now sit in this room where there's nothing to look at and let's see what your brain does. So you would have thought that in that situation where you can actually relax, that my brain would have like, quite a, like that's why I would have fallen asleep no in the test where I'm like just sitting in a room my brain's like 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 insane <laughs> it was just remarkable and then of course you know you take the assessment and everything and I found it to be fascinating to see my brain to actually see that I had 
uh, quite a few concussions, which I knew I'd had concussions as a kid, which is another sign of being someone with ADHD. You're a risk taker, accident prone. I mean, I've been in so many different car accidents, so many different boating accidents, like so many accidents. And I, I had more concussions in my brain than my husband who played professional football. Like, that's how many concussions I had. And I'm going to show you on the screen here what my brain looked like before I started following the protocol to help heal not just my concussions, but my ADHD. So getting that diagnosis was huge for me. It was life-changing. Ladies and gentlemen, that it literally that day, the day I got my diagnosis, I changed everything. I changed the way I eat. I, I changed the way I sleep. I changed my wake time. I changed my career. I stepped away from the fitness industry. Like that day, I sat in my car and I cried. Cause I'm like, I just like, now I had all this information and it wasn't until that day that I realized like all of the lifestyle things that I was doing was making it a million times worse. So these holes. Those holes, which what they, they mean, you don't have holes in your brain. It means significantly lower blood flow. So if you don't, get your brain to the nutrients it needs, it starts to die. Mm -hmm. um, and blood is just absolutely essential because it brings nutrients and it takes away toxins. Mm -hmm. Since attention's an issue, the front part mm -hmm. of your brain at rest, not too bad, but when you concentrate, it completely drops for <laughs> so long, you would like, try harder, try harder. Yeah. But that just on it. stress yeah. and frustration makes them the irritability. Right. And as great as you are, you just go, I know this is too hard. Yes. Now listen, I don't want this video to be like two hours long. So if you'd like for me to create a follow-up video where I talk to you about the changes I made by adding supplementation, the modifications I've made to my my lifestyle and the things I do and don't do anymore, how I change my sleep, also what medications I take and what types of ADHD, and there, whether you think there's three or seven is up to you, but there are certain types of ADHD which are far better suited with a natural healing process instead of resorting to taking a drug. There are certain types of ADHD that if you're taking uh, like a stimulant, for example, like Adderall or Ritalin, it can actually make your ADHD very much mimic anxiety. Like you can get very OCD and very um, hyper-focused on worry and have suicidal thoughts. So it's very, very important that you know how your brain works. And again, maybe I'm crazy, it just seems like a really good idea to actually look at the organ that we're talking about. Can you imagine someone giving you a, a diagnosis for your heart and they've never looked at your heart? Or deciding there's something wrong with your lungs, but they've never looked at your lungs? It's our brain. We should look at it. With that said, it truly has been life-changing for me to have this diagnosis. I imagine it's almost like getting a 23andMe and finding out who your ancestors are or why you are the way that you are or that you've got brothers and sisters that you never knew about or, or that you were adopted. Like, and then you're like, oh my God, my whole life makes more sense now. For me, it was almost like I was wearing the wrong prescription glasses all my life. And then suddenly I put on these prescriptions that allowed me to see everything clearly. <sighs> I, it literally changed my life. It got to a point that my ADHD had gotten so bad that I was recording. We lived in this big giant house. I don't know how many square feet, like over 10,000 square feet. And I was so overwhelmed by any noise, any sound, any smell. I could not focus. So I, I took a, a closet on the third floor and converted it into an office because I couldn't even sit in a regular office where I might be seeing people walk by or things outside the window because my ADHD had gotten so out of control. Honey, your clutter everywhere is so distracting. This whole house is covered in your clutter. This is not clutter, these are my projects. What time did you say the meeting was again? We have to leave here in 10 minutes. Perfect, that gives me enough time to paint the whole outside of the house. For Friday, it looks like we'll be up. Um, can you not talk while I'm thinking? I really can't think if you're gonna keep swallowing.
Don't forget we have reservations tonight. Now? No, tonight. So not now, later. Our flight is leaving in two hours. Okay, but not now. Correct, two hours. I got it. Hey babe, the uh, neighbors are gonna stop by on Saturday. Okay, so not now, later. Like Saturday. Uh, later. Aaron is asking if we wanna do the webinar on the 18th. Today? Today's the 13th. Okay, so, so later. Hey, we gotta leave now or we're gonna miss our flight. Having that diagnosis and learning how to manage it with lifestyle choices and, and just like learning a lot more about my ADHD and how to manage my time and understanding like time blindness and where does this come, like what are all these things? Understanding how that works in my brain allowed me to set up systems and ways to modify it because the world doesn't have to modify for me. I have to modify myself for the world, that's my belief even though time blindness girl doesn't. Have you seen that video? So I just got yelled at for asking a very reasonable question. So I'm applying to go somewhere and I just wanted to know, are there accommodations for people who struggle with time blindness and being on time, you know? And then the person I was with interrupted and acted like I was asking something else. And then when we were done, they actually started yelling at me and saying that accommodations for time blindness doesn't exist. And if you struggle with being on time, you'll never be able to get a job you know, provided you're trying your absolute best to be there. And then they're like, your stupid generation wants to destroy the workplace. And yeah, I think that a culture where workers are just cut off because they struggle with being on time when there's other solutions that we can look to, I think that just anybody who thinks it's okay to just treat people like that, yeah, that culture needs to be dismantled. And then I asked that person, how can you feel good about yourself upholding this kind of system? And then to think, I'm entitled. No, if people think it's okay to treat others like this, uh, that's entitlement. Yeah, listen, time blindness is a thing, but it's not a thing that uh, your employer is going to make accommodations for. You have to figure out how to make accommodations for it. And if that's a, a topic you'd like to learn more about, because it's a thing, and we can talk about the perception of time and why, what's going on in the brain of someone who has ADHD and how you can, how you can learn to show up on time and not get fired. Lastly, if you'd like to learn more about, again, the modifications I've made to my lifestyle, or you're just curious about those seven different types of ADHD, I'm going to put a link to uh, Dr. Amon's clinic or his website, I should say here, where you can go and you can take the test. And I think even if you already have an ADHD diagnosis, it might be really interesting for you to take this test. And obviously it's, it's an online test. So it's, it's never going to be as effective as showing up someplace in person, but I think it's a great place to start. And if you're wondering where you go to get a diagnosis, well, you can certainly go to your general practitioner. You can go to a psychiatrist, pediatrician, neurologist, or a licensed therapist. My personal recommendation would be go to someone who specifically, like this is their specialty, if it's at all possible. I know with insurance and all these things, like sometimes it's not, but I, I, it just makes a huge difference. Like I've gone because we've traveled a lot. I've, I've had to go see doctors um, who say they treat people who have ADHD, but I'm like, this person, they don't get it. They do not get it. They don't understand my brain. And they're just like trying to be a prescription mill. You know what I mean? And so I just think it makes a really huge difference when you find someone who this is their life's passion. This is what they do. And they can help you make the changes naturally to improve your focus because people with ADHD are amazing. You are my favorite people. All of my friends have ADHD. I don't even get along with people, well, except for my husband. I get along with him, he's very, very focused. But most of the time, like if we're gonna be buddies, I need to be able to change subjects on you. You need to be able to interrupt me. I need to be able to be distracted and it doesn't bother you. I also love it when you show up late because I'm probably gonna show up late on you the next time. So listen, if you have ADHD and 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 other people's clutter drives you crazy, but you, you love your own clutter, like don't touch it or I will kill you, then we can be friends. Drop the comment, hashtag ADHD bestie below if that's you. Hey, thanks so much for listening to this episode of The Shaleen Show. If you haven't already, please make sure that you hit that like button, right? I mean, that's I mean, it's the least you could do. We spent all this time together. I want to get you focused and I get you to hit that like button. And now I'm going to get you really, really focused. And I'm going to have you double check. Make sure that you subscribed to The Shaleen Show. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Love you. I mean it. And I'll talk to you soon. I hope I looked cute because I never checked my hair. Oh, no. Oh, no. But I did get a, um, I did get a, what do you call it? A Dyson Airwave. <gasps>
you'll have to take out a mortgage on your home, but it's worth 